Hello and welcome to Mysteries of Science. I'm Scary Stevie Derrick and I'm the Deputy Editor of Science and Nature, the monthly magazine from the team behind The Week Junior. And I'm Michael Dastardly Dalton, the junior editor. We're your hosts today here with a very spooky episode just in time for Halloween. Yes, Michael and I are going on a ghost hunt with some real life Ghostbusters to try and find out the science behind the spectres. Join us if you dare. Ah! Stevie, what was that? <laughs> I'm sure you'll be braver than Michael. This is Mysteries of Science. Hi, this is Amelia. In my opinion, it's the best podcast ever. I love all your monster episodes, so the Bigfoot shapeshifters, Loch Ness, and your favourite Halloween creatures. I hope to hear more about ghosts. Thank you. So, Stevie, ghosts. This is one our listeners have been asking us to investigate for a while now. Have you ever had a paranormal encounter? Well, I used to live in a bungalow in Finland and loads of really spooky things happened there. Things would start moving without anyone like touching them or anyone moving them. There was a lot of bumps in the night, but my brother also swears that he's seen like a ghostly shape at the door. It was very freaky. Okay, I'm very jealous because I have never, at least not to my knowledge, had any kind of paranormal encounters, any ghostly sightings, but I'm wondering whether we might have one over the course of this episode. Well, whatever happens, I think we're going to need some experts to guide us through. So tell us, Michael, who are we speaking to today? Well, how about someone who has spent the last two decades investigating paranormal activity on our TV screens? Hi, I'm Yvette Fielding. I am a television presenter and an author, but I suppose primarily I am a paranormal investigator and I've been uh, paranormal investigating all around the world and I've been doing it for 20 years and it's a real passion and love of mine and I... Um, began doing this when I started my own TV show called Most Haunted, which is shown all around the world. Hi, Yvette. Have you always been interested in ghosts? By the way, if you hear any strange noises, I always say this. It's not paranormal. It's my British bulldog. He likes to snort and make strange noises. So it's not me. It's not a ghost. It's Watson. <laughs> Um, yes, yeah, so I suppose my first dipping my toe into it, I, I was young, I was a child, and there was this amazing program um, on television called Strange But True, and also, also Arthur C. Clarke's Mysterious World. And as a child, I loved watching these shows because it would talk about ghosts and strange things and UFOs, and I was really fascinated by all of this. But then, of course, when it came to bedtime... I used to, you know, the duvet or the the, the, the bedclothes would go over, over my head and I'd be all hot and sweating, but I'd be so nervous and frightened, thinking, oh, is there a ghost in my room? So I was interested and intrigued, but also very nervous and frightened of them, which is strange, I know. OK, so if we hear any strange noises, it's not a ghost, it's just Watson. That's good to know. So does that mean, Yvette, that you always believed in ghosts then, or was there a particular encounter that kind of really made you believe in them? It was when I started investigating the paranormal for the TV show Most Haunted that when I saw things and heard things and recorded things <clears throat> that were paranormal, so not normal, that could not be explained logically, that's when I went, ah, OK, there is something after this life. There is something so much bigger to what we understand and we haven't even scratched the surface to it um, and I'm a big believer in science I absolutely love um, you know certain theories I get the new scientist magazine um, all the time um, you know I'm very much into as much as I can understand physics and the universe and the multiverses so I definitely now believe that there is something after we leave this body we go on somewhere else and Most Haunted did that for me. For those of us who haven't seen Most Haunted could you please tell us what it's about? Um, so the show um, is basically myself I, I present and host the show um, and we go to alleged haunted locations all around um, it started off in the UK um, and with me uh, I take a camera crew with me and a, um, a parapsychologist 
um, and also a, a medium, a psychic. Um, and we investigated, spent the night, 24 hours in these haunted locations. And then we would record everything. The crew would be involved. So a cameraman would go off on his own. We'd record that myself and say the makeup lady, we'd go off on our own and we'd record that. So we we were a small group of people that spent all this time in locked in a haunted castle or a prison and then what we do is we would look at all our findings put them together in a program and then we would say to the public what do you think now what are we talking about exactly when we talk about a ghost i mean i'm picturing a you know a white sheet with holes cut out for the eyes but i'm guessing that's not what people are seeing is it Well, Michael, why don't we bring in our second expert who, like a vet, has investigated paranormal activity. Hi, my name's Chris French. I'm a professor emeritus of psychology. Uh, I retired from Goldsmiths uh, just over a year ago. Uh, My particular interest is in the area of anomalistic psychology, which immediately prompts the question, what the heck is anomalistic psychology? And it's basically the psychology of weird experiences and beliefs. So people who claim they've been abducted by aliens, people who think they have psychic powers, people who believe they can talk to spirits, etc, etc. If it's weird, we're interested in it. Now, according to Chris, paranormal experiences tend to fall into one of two categories. The very concept of ghost summons up a kind of an image of a a transparent figure walking through a wall and then maybe walking across the room and passing through the opposite wall and disappearing, you know. Um, Those kind of experiences, they do happen, but they're extremely rare. People are more likely to feel they've had a ghostly encounter on the basis of much more kind of subtle uh, things. Things like walking into a room and feeling a sense of presence. You feel as if there's maybe someone looking at you, someone standing behind you, or getting a chill down the spine, or uh, a a whole range, you know, thinking you're hearing your voice. Was that, what was that strange noise? You know, it's that kind of much more kind of less dramatic thing that can lead people to think they've had a ghostly encounter. Okay, so we're not just talking about seeing things here, but feeling things as well. Kind of a, a feeling that something's not quite right. Exactly. But unlike a vet, Chris is a sceptic. This means he's someone who doesn't believe in ghosts and in fact has worked to try and prove that they don't exist by revealing what he thinks is really going on when people report ghostly sightings. But he didn't always feel like that. Certainly when I was, uh, when I was a kid, I was absolutely terrified of ghosts. You know, I was one of those people who needed a nightlight until well into kind of childhood. Uh, Slightly embarrassing now, of course. Um, Now I don't believe in ghosts at all. I think there are far more plausible explanations than the idea that there are spirits popping into people's bedrooms. So what changed your mind, Chris? Why did you go from being a believer into a (laughs) sceptic? Now, it's that kind of thing. I don't know that you just heard <laughs> that strange noise in the bedroom that I'm in now. Uh, that could lead someone to believe they have a ghost, but I just saw a book falling off my desk there, so that's what that was. Um, the uh, the way that I kind of went from being a believer to being a sceptic was, as I say, it's always been an area that has fascinated me. And well into early adulthood, I would have said I believed in quite a lot of paranormal type phenomena. Um, When I was doing my PhD at Leicester University many decades ago, a friend recommended a particular book that he thought I would like. It was called Parapsychology, Science or Magic. It was by uh, James Alcock, a Canadian social psychologist. Uh, And I read the book and I really did enjoy it. And it was the first sceptical treatment of any of this stuff that I'd ever come across. And it put forward alternative non-paranormal explanations for a whole range of kind of weird experiences that people report. And I found them very convincing. OK, are we sure that book falling over wasn't a ghost? This isn't a haunted interview, is it? Don't worry, Michael. Chris told us what happened. It was just a book falling over. No ghosts here. OK, OK. OK, so Chris, put my mind at ease even more. What other explanations could there be for people seeing ghosts? One possibility, of course, is that we're dealing with hoaxes. Now, I don't think that the vast majority of claims of ghostly encounters are hoaxes. I think in the vast majority, people are 100% sincere in what they're claiming. But we do know that hoaxes do occur, particularly in the kind of more spectacular cases. I mean, there's a lot of these kind of um, 
TV programs where paranormal investigators allegedly go into uh, haunted locations. Indeed, I've taken part in some of them myself. Um, now, the one that I took part in, uh, nothing was ever hoaxed, and that meant that basically nothing ever happened, <laughs> in contrast to some of the others that have maybe had a longer run, you know, because uh, yeah, they make stuff up. They, they, make, they make stuff happen that... That isn't is it? Yeah, it, it's just a hoax. It's just a, it's a, it's a con, but it keeps the viewers. If I was watching my TV show Most Haunted at the beginning, I would have said, "Oh well, it's faked. It's all made up. It's a TV show." Even Ofcom put on the front of it, "This is for entertainment purposes only," which was very frustrating and annoying for us because. It's a real investigation. We don't fake anything. We, there's no fake wires. There's nobody pulling on strings or anything like that. We're, we are recording a real ghost investigation. Um, but, like I say, if I was watching it, because it's branded as entertainment, you actually think, well, OK, it has to be made up. So what we did was, um, is we started Most Haunted Experience, and it's the only... Um, sort of uh, event really um, that's married with a paranormal TV show in the world so everybody that's a bit like oh I don't, you know I don't believe it's a load of rubbish I always say well come with me on a most haunted experience come with the rest of the crew choose a location and spend the night with us and you'll see that what we do on the TV show mirrors what we do on an event and we've been running those for coming up I think for seven years now so had there been any episodes of most haunted where nothing happens you can't get it all banging and ghosts showing themselves to you and clanking the chains on the first night we have 64 programs on the shelf which has never well, they've never been aired because nothing happens because it's so boring and that's what it is with the world of the paranormal and any good ghost hunting group will tell you that you'll spend days, weeks, months, years investigating a, a place and nothing might happen at all but then you might just catch something so extraordinary that defies all logic and that's why I do it because I've caught so much stuff that defies logic but has changed so many people's beliefs and that's what it's like a roller coaster ride for me. I get so excited on adrenaline every time I go into an alleged haunted house. So, yes, yeah, so we started Most Haunted Experience for those doubters, for those people that weren't quite sure. And, and it's worked an absolute treat. So, Chris, when things aren't a hoax, what other explanations could there be if it's not a ghost? I think the two biggest psychological factors in terms of determining whether someone will have a ghostly encounter are first of all prior belief do, the, do those people actually believe in ghosts before they even have the encounter um, and secondly context you know we all know that if you if you're being shown around an old building and somebody says oh and this this room's supposed to be haunted it completely changes your mental set once you go in there and any slight creak that you hear takes on tremendous significance you probably wouldn't have even noticed the creak if you hadn't been told the room was haunted any drafts that you feel etc etc so that applies to people who already believe or who might want to believe in ghosts but what about people who haven't been prepped in that way hallucinations are much more common amongst the general population than is generally realised. It's not only people who are suffering from severe you know, psych psychopathology that might have a hallucination. We could all hallucinate under appropriate conditions if we're very tired or very stressed or whatever else it may be. OK, hallucinations, I've heard of them. That's when you kind of see things that aren't really there. And as Chris says, lots of things can trigger those. So that makes sense as one explanation for ghosts. But what else? One of the things that we're particularly interested in is a phenomenon called sleep paralysis. And in its most basic form, it's very common. Um, it's, it's when you're half awake and half asleep and you realise you can't move. And typically it lasts a few seconds and you snap out of it and think, oh, that was a bit weird and just you know, get on with your day. Um, but it can be associated with a whole range of really scary hallucinations. People can think that they're seeing kind of scary, monstrous figures in the room. They can hear voices or footsteps. They can feel as if they're, they're being pressed down. They feel a pressure on the chest. It can be absolutely terrifying. Um, and of course, if you suffer from something like that and you've never heard that there is this thing called sleep paralysis, that we we understand in broad terms the science of what's going on there you may well think you've had a ghostly encounter well, you know, not an unreasonable thing to think if you don't know about this thing called sleep paralysis 
Okay, so now we know scientifically that for a variety of different reasons, whether it be hallucinations or sleep paralysis, that people can see things that aren't actually there. That might explain why individual people see certain things, but what about haunted houses or objects moving unexpectedly? You know, the, the things that more than one person can see. Well, as Chris said earlier, it could be that people are reacting to things they otherwise wouldn't because they've been told that the house is haunted. Or it could all turn out to be the work of a friendly mouse. I mean, one of, the, one of my favourite examples, which uh, I, I, I kind of use when I'm giving talks on this stuff, is there was a case in the news a couple of years back now of uh, a chap who used to um, tinker about in a little workshop that he had. Uh, he, he was very messy. He would leave his workbench very untidy. He'd lock up, he'd go, go in go to bed, come back the next morning, open up, and everything had been tidied away, and he could not figure out what was going on. It turned out he and a neighbour set up a video camera to actually record what was going on, and this video is available on, on YouTube if people want to have a look at it. It was a little mouse that was coming out and tidying away all his bits and pieces and putting them all back in his box and so on. Now, if a sceptic like me had suggested that as a possible explanation, Understandably, people would have laughed their heads off and thought, what a ridiculous explanation. Thing is, it was the true explanation. We only know because we've got the video evidence. A mouse. Yeah, OK, I definitely did not see that one coming. So is that case closed then? There's nothing to see here? People are just seeing what they want to see or seeing things that aren't there or it was just a mouse all along? Not so fast. Let's not forget that while some cases might end up being explained, others aren't. And as Yvette reminds us, many famous scientists believe in the idea of an afterlife. Edison. Edison, who invented many, many things, including the movie camera, for instance. Um, he was a huge spiritualist and believed in an afterlife and believed that it was possible to communicate with the spirit world. And so he invented, um, he never made it, it was just drawings um, uh, of a, that, that, was, that was nicknamed the ghost phone. And I think somebody made it off some drawings. Um, and you can see a sort of a picture of this, of this, uh, of Edison's ghost phone. So here is an incredibly intelligent scientist who, who changed our world. And here he is believing that it was possible to speak to dead people. So let's crack out our old friend, the mysteriometer. So there, on a scale of one to 10, how much do we know about ghosts? Well, as a whole, as, as the, from a scientific point of view, I would say it's very low, two. I think that people who are open to it, so you have amazing spiritualists around the world, um, gurus, um, prophets, um, spiritual people, they would be right up there in, uh, on a 10. And they're absolutely, you know, tuned into the other side. They know what happens to us when we die. But from a science point of view, it, and isn't that disappointing? that the science side of it is very low, but yet the spiritual side of it is so high. I wish we could sort of meet in the middle a little bit. So as far as the science goes, there's no proof that ghosts exist. And as Chris says, plenty of explanations for what could be behind supposedly paranormal phenomena. But that doesn't mean that we have an explanation for everything, or, especially when it comes to Halloween, that we can't enjoy a good ghost story. And if you want to read a ghost story written by a real-life ghost hunter, then why not check out Yvette's books, The Ghost Hunter Chronicles? So I started writing uh, my books, The Ghost Hunter Chronicles, and uh, they've proven to be, you know, um, quite successful, which is very exciting for me, but also very encouraging to know that there are lots of youngsters out there who love the paranormal and love talking about ghosts and adore going on ghost hunts. They're a lot braver than I, I was at their age, I can tell you. And you're all a lot braver than me too. Now, as you heard at the start of the show, this was a mystery that was requested by you, our listeners, and we'd love to hear from you again. Yes, what mysteries would you like us to investigate? The final episode of this season will be dedicated to your mysteries, where we'll put your questions to the experts. To send us a question, head to funkidslive.com forward slash mysteries. There you can leave us a voice message by pressing the big red button. We can't wait to hear from you. But we're not done yet. No, join us in two weeks' time where we'll be tackling the biggest issue facing the world today, climate change. Yes, we'll be speaking to some expert guests to find out what climate change is, what's causing it, and most importantly, what we can do to fix it. Until then, stay, stay curious. curious.